Hi there PMDG Simmers! In this uh, tutorial video I will deal with the fuel management on the PMDG 747-400. Now it basically fits to also to the 737 and other models of the 747. However this will focus on the 747-400 uh, by uh, PMDGs. And, uh, well, I assume that if you arrive to my uh, video, many of the other PMDG 747 FMC aspects are already covered, such as the root page, the legs page, the climb, cruise and descent, VNAV speeds, um, how you should prepare for an approach, how to perform an ILS landing, and other issues of flying. On this you're on the ball, and that is great. I will also try to answer about two main FMC fuel messages um, many simmers get. One of them is the insufficient fuel and the other one is the imbalanced fuel in tanks 2 or 3. And this tutorial will be divided into two parts. Part 1 will go through the prepped in page in the FMC where you manage your weight of fuel prior for the flight. And in part 2 of the tutorial I will uh, sort out the two FMC fuel related messages, the insufficient fuel and the imbalance in tanks uh, 2 or 3. Um, at the end of, ta of part 2 I will also provide you with a very useful link where you just put your origin, destination and aircraft you are using. Hopefully it will be one of the PMDG's aircraft. And that's it, you get all the numbers you need for fuel and for weight in the highest uh, accuracy possible. It's a very, very reliable, very, very useful link that I will give you. So some basic information on the 747-400 to begin with uh, depends on its engines. If it's uh, Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce or General Electric, the maximum thrust ranges between 59,000 pounds of thrust to around 36,000 pounds of thrust and this is an amazing power given by uh, those engines. The maximum range of the 747-400 is uh, 7,000, roughly 7,500 uh, nautical miles, which is around 14,000 kilometers. The maximum fuel capacity is 57,000 gallons, and in liters it's uh, roughly 217,000 liters. And if you want this number in, in pounds, you should multiply it by 2.2. Because one liter or one kilo depends to uh, equals to 2.2 in pounds, so this is the this is the calculations. Uh, the typical cruise speed is 0.85 mark for altitude of 35,000 feet, but it really depends on your service altitude. So uh, you can adjust your speed to your altitude, and of course uh, by the the route you are flying. So. We manage weight and fuel in the in the FMC's pref int page. I will show you that I will show you that page in a bit. For manually setting weight and fuel, I do not. I repeat, I do not use PMDG's load manager application, but I'm doing it in the FMC and the PMDG's add-on menu within FSX. Um, yeah, sure. The, the the application itself works. It will do the job. But if you want to get to closer to real flying, closer to the maximum accuracy of numbers you need for your specific flight, I recommend that you will do it manually by just putting the numbers that you need for your flight. So, for this example, I will take on purpose a long distance flight to show you how to enter the numbers manually. So, at the moment I am parked at Los Angeles International Airport and we are flying today to Tel Aviv, Israel. This is a very long flight. This is a 6,500 nautical miles uh, long distance flight of around 14-15 hours of a non-stop flight. So we'll need a, a lot of fuel and um, in addition this flight is a full flight. Um, all, all it's a full flight like all the passengers are on board, so it's a full flight by weight and it's a full flight um, with the fuel aspect. And this is important because the numbers you get by default in the FMC 
fierce more to a medium range flight for example between 1500 to 1800 nautical miles will be ready to go with the default numbers given by the FMC but if you have long distance flight or if you have very short distance flight you want to adjust the numbers uh, properly because if it's a long distance flight you'll need of course more fuel for your flight if it's a shorter distance flight you'll need to cut the numbers of weight and fuel because you want to fly as sufficient as possible and flying as sufficient as possible meaning you only take the amount of fuel that you need you don't take for no reason extra fuel except from, uh, from the reserves fuel but we'll get to there in a minute so let's start we are now I hope I hope that your GPS is aligned if no please align it now to Los Angeles International Airport and we'll see just how we do that so before the prefting page we are in the root page and we'll put the ICO code for Los Angeles International Airport which is KLAX and we'll put it in the origin and as I said we are flying to Ben Gurion Airport Tel Aviv which ICO's code is LLBG so we'll put that activate and we'll go to the preft in page now this is the page where you manage your weight and your fuel as you see the default number I got by the FMC for the fuel is 103.6 thousand liters and this is not enough for us we need more I calculated by the link uh, before that I will need around 380 thousand liters of fuel for this long distance flight so what we do is we get as you can see in the in with the cursor of the mouse I go to the add-ons PMDG and aircraft fuel now because some reason fraps uh, will not capture video for me going to the screen of the aircraft fuel but you just click on this and you will see it's very simple to enter the amount of fuel you need you click then apply and OK and when you go back to the FMC you will see that the fuel number will adjust it exactly as, as, as you want it to be so in a sec I will do that you will not see me actually entering the number but you will see it's changed on the FMC so I'm now putting the number I need I will put 3082 382 thousand liters sorry I clicked OK and now I'm back in the FMC so you see the fuel is 382 thousand liters the gross weight is 849,000 I accept this number and now it gave me also a number in the ZFW so before we get to the ZFW what is the gross weight? well the gross weight is the total weight of the aircraft with everything calculated that means passengers cabin passengers cabin weight cargo weight fuel oil all in total is calculated to the gross weight so if you think of it when the aircraft is taxing to the runway the gross weight is actually equals to the actual takeoff weight only while you are flying the gross weight reduces in number because we consume fuel and oil so the gross weight is uh, 849,000 this is very close to the maximum gross weight this aircraft can carry the fuel we entered manually that we need for this long distance flight is uh, 382,000 liters and it showed us the number 466.7 in the ZFW now the ZFW means stands for zero fuel weight this is the weight of the aircraft with the luggage with the cargo calculated without the fuel alright so ZFW stands for zero fuel weight you can change this number accordingly to the amount of passengers on board if it's a uh, third capacity of passengers two-thirds and uh, full uh, full aircraft um, full passengers on board or maximum passengers on board 
So we go to the reserves. The reserves is the number of fuel you are calculating for, um, for many situ situations. One of them is, uh, for example, entering and hold pattern that you will need to perform. Uh, the reserves fuel can uh, be used for changing route while flying due to winds, extreme winds or uh, storms or severe weather. Reserves can be used for uh, being diverted by air traffic controller or many other situations you will need to use the reserves fuel. So for this flight, I will put the number 40, 40 tons of fuel. And uh, if you are, um, but for m most of your flights, the number 10 will do the job also. Now the cost index, the cost index is a very interesting uh, uh, aspect and it can be also a chapter by itself. But uh, you know what, I will give you Boeing definition for, uh, for cost index. And um, Boeing states that cost index is the ratio of time related cost of an airplane operation and the cost of fuel. The value of the cost index reflects the relative effects of fuel cost on overall trip cost as compared to time related direct operating costs. Sounds difficult to understand, but in short the equation is uh, dollar per hour divided by cents per pound of fuel. So um, basically it means sufficient flying. It means you want to use the least fuel possible uh, for the longest time possible. And the number we'll use for this is 100. Possible numbers for cost index in the 747-400 ranges between 0 to 9,999, while the higher the number is, the less sufficient um, the less sufficient it is while flying in the ratio of time and uh, versus fuel consumption. The number 100 for cost index is is um, is very sufficient flying. Now this number will change during the flight. For example, when you are climbing, the number will be higher than 100 because it will be less sufficient in the comparison between fuel and time. When you go, when you arrive to cruise altitude, it will set in in 100 and will be very sufficient. So, we know now how to uh, put the gross weight, adjust the fuel, what is ZFW, what is the reserves fuel and the cost index, what, they are, what it stands for. Cruise altitude will be for this flight um, 39,000 feet, uh, but it's not relevant for this specific tutorial. And uh, that's about it, just remember, you can put it manually, get the most accuracy numbers for your flight by the link I will give you at the end of part 2 on this tutorial. And the uh, part 2 again will deal with the insufficient uh, fuel message given by the FMC and the imbalance uh, fuel in tanks uh, 2 and 3. So, so uh, thank you for watching, have fun, uh, keep, keep flying, and I'll see you in part 2 shortly. Thank you.